St. Paul speaks of our human condition in the first reading to the Romans. I know that good does not dwell in me, that is, in my flesh. The willing is ready at hand, but doing the good is not. For I do not do the good I want, but I do the evil I do not want. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. <clears throat> And we have the word to describe that condition, that condition to evil, to inclination to sin. In Catholic teaching, it's called concupiscence. And psychologists and philosophers have tried to describe our condition. They were confused. They didn't fully understand. Some of them perhaps stumbled on the on the truth that it, we're inclined to evil, but that we can do good if we struggle and strive to do that. Some have uh, described our condition as we are innately good and uh, we are corrupted by exterior influences or we are innately evil, miserable, uh, depraved. Some Protestants have had come up with that conclusion, but we start with this principle, this truth of concupiscence, that we're all inclined to sin, and yet there is the grace of God to help us to lift us out of sin. We're inclined to pride, we're inclined to anger, we're inclined to greed and envy, we're inclined to lust, gluttony, and laziness. We're inclined to do all these things, and the only way to overcome them is to struggle against them, to practice the opposite virtues, to practice humility, to practice meekness and slowness, to anger, to practice charity, to practice a love for poverty, to overcome our, our greed, <clears throat> to practice purity and self-control, to practice diligence and hard work, and to practice temperance these virtues we need to practice. But this condition of concupiscence remains, us, remains with us until we are dead. All our life, this concupiscence stays with us. And our Lord did not erase it in his suffering and death on the cross. He kept it in our condition so that we will always be on our toes, so that we'll always have something to, to work towards, to struggle with, to... Uh, to work at so that we'll have something to earn for, earn a reward for eternal life. So this is our condition to work and strive and to fight and to uh, give to God, to give to our Lord, to, to give our, our efforts, our hearts, our work. And uh, so we are in, in this struggle and this effort that we make, which we have to make, we have to keep working. If we slacken, we will fall. We will, if we give in or we give up, then we will get worse and things will go from bad to worse. So, <clears throat> but we do have the hope in the grace of God to con con conquer this concupiscence and we turn to him for help and strength in, in prayer and in the sacraments, a continual recourse to God throughout the day, throughout our life. And this is a, a constant thing. We can never slacken. And uh, so this is, a, this is a challenge to us, uh, an adventure through our life that we, we need to overcome ourselves, a concupiscence. But this is only part of the story. Of course, we have a devil to fight against, and we have the allurements of the world. But concupiscence is the greatest enemy, our domestic enemy. We need to recognize it. And with the help of our faith and this truth, this understanding, this principle of concupiscence, we can understand it and we can accept it and we can uh, work with it and, 
It's when we, it's when we get lazy. It's when we don't continue the fight and the struggle and swimming upstream and <clears throat> and uh, putting one foot in front of the other that we get worse. And so let's not let this happen. But let's continue the fight to the end.